Lord Hillary is waterlogged. Today I'm going to talk to you about wrasses. Now if you're looking to add a beautiful pop of color to your tank, wrasses might be the way to go. Now when it comes to different groups of fish, wrasses are one of the most diverse groups that you'll find, but we're going to stay focused on the ones that you might keep in your home aquarium. Before I get into it, I'm curious, have you ever kept a wrasse at home? Or what is your favorite wrasse that you would always want to keep but haven't had the chance yet? Leave a comment below and let me know. So, as always, I'm going to try and break them down into groups. Let's get started with the fairy wrasses. Those are your Sahelabrius wrasses. Um, for example, the red-headed wrasse, um, the Labatt's fairy wrasse, which is actually one of my favorite wrasses. The first wrasse that I ever fell in love with was a Labatt's fairy wrasse. The patterns on them are absolutely stunning. Next up, you have your Scott's wrasse and your exquisite wrasse, two more that have just beautiful, beautiful colors. Next up are your flasher wrasses. Those are the Parachelinus wrasses. Um, in that group is going to be your Carpenter's wrasse, your McCosker's wrasse, um, and red tail wrasses. All fall under that flasher wrasse category. Okay, next up we have our pseudo shellinus wrasses. Those are gonna be ones like your mystery wrasse and your six line wrasse. If you watch in the back of this video, you might see my six line wrasse swimming around, eating some of those vermitids in my tank. Next up, we have your Halicorus wrasses. Now, this is not very scientific, but I like to think of them as almost snub nose wrasses. If you look real closely at the tip of their nose, to me, it always looks like their nose and the end of their mouth is kind of pointed up like, I'm too good for you. So in that category is going to be <laughs> your yellow wrasses and your um, Christmas wrasses. Next up, um, the category is possum wrasses. So those guys are going to be a little bit smaller than what Morella wrasses, um, like that sharp nose possum wrasse, and there's a few others as well. Now, next way of breaking them down, some wrasses actually look differently, um, the males versus the females. So wrasses that fall into that category are going to be the bird wrasse. That's another one of my favorite of the larger wrasses. Um, flame wrasses are another one the males look good bit different than the females, and leopard wrasses also. There's a big difference in color and pattern for all of those wrasses. Now, another type of grouping that you could put wrasses in is wrasses that change based on their age. So um, the dragon wrasse and the red chorus wrasse, both the juveniles of this species are going to look different than the adults. And this is something if you are going and purchasing your fish at a local fish store or even online, a lot of times they will differentiate on their labeling and let you know if you're looking at the juvenile or at the adult. But always do your research before you buy your fish. Now, you may have heard that some wrasses burrow in the sand and wrasses that fall into that burrowing category are the um, Halicorus wrasses, so like your Christmas wrasse um, and your Melanaris wrasse, those guys will burrow, burrow in the sand. Also, um, the beautiful Femininus wrasse is another one that buries itself in the sand as well as those Chorus wrasses. So just something to keep in mind if you want to add a wrasse, um, make sure if it needs sand that it has sand. Now, when it comes to the size tank you need, um, even though wrasses as a group are fairly small fish, you're gonna need to give them a lot of space because they do like to swim. Now, wrasses like the six line wrasse, like I've gotten here, they're gonna stay small, about three inches, so you could get away with about a 55 gallon tank but some of your other wrasses on average run about five to seven inches in length. So you're gonna go with about a hundred plus gallon tank. Now, if you do have wrasses like some of your red chorus wrasses or your bird wrasse, those guys get pretty big, over a foot in length. So you wanna make sure they have a lot of space. 125 gallons minimum is the tank size that they are going to need. All right. We've talked about different wrasses, different tank sizes. Let's go talk about their diet. Come on, follow me to the kitchen. All right, let's talk about what you can feed your wrasses. Now, I'm curious before we get into this, if you have a wrasse at home, what is their favorite food to eat? Leave a comment below and let me know. All right, so wrasses are carnivores, right? Not to say that they won't eat some vegetables, but primarily they're gonna eat those meaty foods. 
Now, before we start talking about the foods that you can buy, I will tell you that wrasses are cool in that they help take care of your tank. So you can buy certain species of wrasses to help out with pests that are already in your aquarium, like the six line wrasse, they will eat vermitids. Um, you can get yellow wrasses that are gonna help take care of bristle worms and flatworms. And as their name suggests, cleaner wrasses will actually help to clean parasites off of other fish in your tank. But something to be cautious of is that there are some wrasses out there that do eat coral and will eat some of your shrimp and your crabs. So make sure you do your research before you start purchasing those. All right, now let's get into all of the different types of foods that you can buy, right? So you've got your dry foods, such as these flakes, and you have your pellet foods. As always, make sure you check and make sure that the pellet is going to fit into your fish's mouth. Wrasses in particular have relatively small mouths, so you don't wanna get a pellet that's way too big for them to eat. It's not something that you're gonna run into with the flake foods, but definitely with pellets, it's something to keep in mind. Now, next up, you have your DIY foods and your gel foods. So um, I think New Life Spectrum makes some. There's a couple other companies out there that make the gel foods that you can mix yourself. Dr. Tim's is a DIY food, but you also have foods like Mastic that is that gel. So these little guys, they kind of look like gummies. You smish them up and you can put them in the rock work. That's something great to feed those wrasses that are naturally coral eaters. If you do happen to get one and have it in your Fowler tank, this is a good uh, replication of the eating style that they would have in the wild. Now, next up is going to be our frozen foods. So you got a bunch of different varieties that you can feed. Um, and it depends on the number of fish that are in your tank that you're trying to feed. So if you've got a small nano tank, you might not want a giant pack of P.E. Mysis like this, but P.E. Mysis is a great food for your wrasses. You can get blister packs, I mentioned those before. So this one by San Francisco Bay brand, it's got a variety of different foods in there for all sorts of reef fishes. Um, or you also have ocean nutrition. Now, one thing I like about these blister packs is that it's all sealed. So when you wanna just feed one little blister of food, you pop it out and the whole rest of the pack is sealed. So that is your frozen foods that you can feed. See if they'll stand back up for me. But one other cool food that you can feed your wrasses is live foods, right? So I mentioned live foods that might already be in your tank and copepods are actually one of those. If you've ever cleaned your filter floss or your filter socks, you might've seen them jumping around. But if you don't have any, don't worry, you can always buy them. So um, this is one of the different brands and we'll zoom in close, hopefully, so you can see these little guys hopping around in here. Um, this is actually a pod habitat, which I'm gonna talk a about a little bit later. So um, just keep in mind that you can feed your wrasses live foods. All right, let's jump on into talking about different issues that you might encounter if you own a ras. If you want to own a ras, there are some things that you should know about wrasses as a whole to help you succeed, right? So. Once they are established, wrasses typically do great in tanks, but it's that initial period of adjustment where they encounter a lot of issues. So I mentioned earlier that several different types of wrasses actually will bury themselves in the sand. And the reason they do this is if they're feeling scared or they're threatened, um, and sometimes that's just a behavior that they exhibit. But if you've just set up a new tank um, and your tank isn't fully cycled, sometimes they can encounter um, all sorts of bacterial infections and secondary infections. So you wanna make sure you give your chance a good, um, your tank a good chance to cycle before you put fish in there. And something else, wrasses in particular with, you can always put something like this, it's gonna help to boost their immune system and help give them a better chance for success. Now, as a species, wrasses tend to be a little bit more sensitive. So they like to jump a lot. Now, I would not recommend keeping a wrasse in any tank without a lid on it. I can't tell you how many times I've seen wrasses get out of tanks, even that have lids. If there's a teeny tiny space, they will find a way to jump out and nobody wants that. Next up, um, I, I mentioned that they, they are pretty sensitive, so you wanna keep on top of your water quality, but that goes with any fish. So make sure that you are doing your water testing, doing your water changes as needed. That's always very, very important. 
Next up, something that you can see with wrasses is uh, aggression issues and territorial and behavioral issues with, um, especially with alpha males in a group. So um, keep that in mind when you're purchasing fish and I'll talk a little bit more about it in just a minute. Now, next up, let's talk about different ways that you can help make your fish's life the best that it can possibly be, right? So that's talking about enrichment. Now, when we were talking about food, I mentioned, I pulled up this little thing. So this <laughs> is a pod habitat. Now, if you look, it's got a bunch of different holes going this way and this way. And the purpose of this is to provide a house for all of those different little types of pods that you might have living in your tank. And once a population will get established, and this will help, um, it's a constant source of live food for your wrasses to chase around and eat and have fun doing so. Something else you can do is changing the flow in your tank. Last time in our video about tangs, I mentioned different power heads and the settings that you can put on them, but you can also use something like this. It is a uh, variable flow device. Typically they're a lot larger, but Vivid Creative Aquatics makes these and gave me this cute little keychain. Um, this offers different flow patterns in your tank. It's pretty cool. I've seen my fish kind of playing in the flow from these. So that's another great way to add variety to your fish's tank. Um, next up, when it comes to feeding, so we talked about these uh, grazer clips last time. You can put your frozen food in here and snap it closed, and that's a different type of way for those wrasses to eat. And the same goes with those foods like mastic that you're gonna put on the glass or smash in the rocks. Um, it just gives them a little bit of variety. Now, in, a different, in addition to ways that you can feed them, you can feed them different foods, you can feed them at different times. All of those count as methods of enrichment for your fish. Um, something else, if you just get a brand new wrasse and it's in a quarantine tank, you can always put something in there like PVC pipes. That's another cool different habitat for them to hang out in if they don't have sand or if they don't have those rocks, just a way to help them feel safe. All right, let's talk about tank mates, right? Tank mates are another good way to help enrich your fish's life. So as always, you can check out that fish compatibility chart on marinedepot.com or you can just type it in. Um, and look for what fish that you are thinking about getting and putting with a wrasse and seeing if they match um, and they'll be compatible. Wrasses are good with a lot of other different fishes, but always check and do your research first. One thing to keep in mind though, is if you want more than one of the same type of wrasse, look to get one male and a whole harem of females. Typically, um, that keeps the male from beating up on just one female, and you don't want to have two males in a group because they will fight, and it you know you'll probably end up losing a fish, and nobody wants that. So, always do your research. Ask your local fish store. That's all I got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If there is a fish that you would like to learn about, leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.